I'm Emily Chan in Hong Kong, where more than 3 million people ride trains to work every day, with another 1 million expected over the next 30 years, and where technology is playing a big role in handling those numbers safely and efficiently. Safety and efficiency are the call words for the nine rail lines serving Greater Hong Kong. Riders speed through turnstiles using prepaid contactless smart cards. Trains are run remotely from control centers at two-minute intervals during rush hour. Sensors regulate the distance between trains and determine speed and braking, avoiding collisions and keeping a tight schedule. Hong Kong is also planning a high-speed train connecting with China's growing high-speed rail network, with trains moving between cities at nearly 220 miles an hour. The rest of the world is going full steam ahead on the high-speed commuter rail. Germany's ICE train has topped 252 miles an hour. Japan's latest train has reached 270 miles per hour. And a French TGV train holds the world record at 357 miles an hour. No European country, certainly not Japan or many countries in Asia, these days would think of moving into the future without high-speed rail. Super train is ready to depart. In the United States, high-speed train travel has been the stuff of Hollywood dreams for decades. Stop the train! Somebody stop the train! But the idea hasn't gone far. The fastest train in America today, Amtrak's Acela, running from Boston to Washington, D.C. at about 150 miles an hour, but only on the straightaways. You have to know where you are. You hit a curb. This curb here is 80 miles an hour. You hit it at 150. You're going on. In fact, the Acela averages 84 miles an hour and needs track upgrades to get up to full speed for most of its run. In order for us to go 150 miles an hour to use the capabilities of the Acela, we need an investment right now of about $5 billion. The Obama administration is anxious to get on board and create a national network of European-style high-speed rail. The problem is it's been happening elsewhere. Not here. Building a new system of high-speed rail in America will be faster, cheaper, and easier than building more freeways or adding to an already overburdened aviation system. And everybody stands to benefit. Eight billion dollars in stimulus money has been earmarked for rail improvements with the promise of more to come. California is taking the lead with a serious look at a high-speed train that can get you from San Francisco to a meeting in Los Angeles in about two and a half hours. You don't have to wait in those long lines. You have an opportunity to get work done and to do it in a way where you are providing an example for generations to focus on a future that is more sustainable, more green, and more connected. But cost estimates run up to $45 billion, not a good sign in the midst of an economic downturn for the state. Advocates say high-speed trains will take millions of cars off the road, improve air quality and create tens of thousands of jobs. But with the government estimating costs of up to $50 million per mile of new track, will the sheer expense prove truly cost-effective? And if they build it, will Americans come to the station and leave the car at home? I'm Emily Chan in Hong Kong for the Business of Innovation.